So whenever you are attending an interview for DevOps or cloud, you will be asked questions on the provisioning of infrastructure or configuration management. So it is important that you use these terms like mutable versus immutable. That way you will make good impression in that interview. So in this video, I'm going to discuss about what is mutable infrastructure versus what is immutable infrastructure and what are the pros and cons of each and how immutable infrastructure is the future, especially in the DevOps and cloud world. So if you are of my age or older than me, you must be aware that previously we used to have a set of fixed servers. So whenever you used to work for a company, you used to have a system admin managing those servers, they used to be fixed servers. So each company used to have their own data center and they used to manage the fixed infrastructure. So your system admins will be given or allocated servers for the database or uh, allocated servers for your web or you know middleware application. Mostly those days and even now if an application is on data center, you will have either a two tier or a three tier, mostly three tier application, meaning a front end, a logical layer, and then the database layer. So that kind of infrastructure where you maintain a constant and fixed infrastructure is called mutable infrastructure. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So Skillshare is a platform where you get access to lots and lots of courses and you can pick your specific skill that you want to develop in 2022. I personally use Skillshare to watch this amazing course about YouTube success script and shoot by the legendary MKBHD. It helped me to create better videos and get better at creating content. But if you are interested in DevOps, you can search for DevOps courses as well. So there are courses on DevOps, cloud and, and most importantly, the first thousand people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And I think Skillshare can help you to make 2022 a year of new learning, growth and connection through creativity. So check it out, click on the link right away and do not miss one month free subscription. You must be surprised to see a puppy or a dog here, which is nothing but a pet. You must have heard this concept of pet versus cattle in the DevOps concepts. And which means that these mutable infrastructure are often called as pets. And I'm going to explain you why. And back in those days, we used to also name the servers with some funny names. Like, you know, for example, Virat is the guy who is managing the systems or a system administrator. Like, let's say here, I'm just taking two servers, but there used to be a lot of servers, a lot of fixed servers that used to have a specific configuration. Now, let's say if you want to use a server for a database, you will have a database configuration on that server, meaning, you know, um, high volumes, like a lot of volumes for that server uh, to maintain the database. So this used to be the configuration and a fixed configuration. So whenever you want to make a change, let's say Virat here is deploying a change to one of the server, which has a specific configuration. And now the problem is, let's say there is an issue with the uh, server or uh, there is an issue in the code. It is often confusing for an engineer to track those changes and roll back. And it's a huge problem whenever you have, you know, one server that is allocated with a specific configuration. So you have to find the issue and you have to roll back or you would move on to a server that is already existing and set up the whole, you know, software again there. So these are some of the common problems of uh, the mutable infrastructure or where you have the fixed nodes and then you maintain them. So that's why they're also called as pets. But this infrastructure works well when you have an application of monolith in nature. For example, let's say you have one huge web logic server. So you want to just deploy that server, then it might work fine because you know you don't make changes often to that web logic layer. And you know, you just make changes once in a month or once in two or three months. So with that being said, let's look at the pros of a mutable infrastructure. So your IT team does not need to build servers from scratch every time because like I've said, you have a fixed number of servers. You don't have to worry about provisioning new servers. So you can roll out updates to individual servers because there are only fixed servers. The patching and the security patching of those servers is much easier. As you know, you, you are dealing with just a few hundred servers or 200 servers and you make changes to those servers. You can ensure that the infrastructure used meets the specific needs of each user. And since you have handful of servers and they're also called as your pets, you can individually 
name them and use them and it's easier to diagnose the problems because you will build your experience by managing those servers and now talking about the cons of mutable infrastructure since each server is unique in configuration it becomes hard to diagnose and manage each server this is called configuration drift and more often whenever the changes were made to those servers they were not documented or tracked so it was impossible to diagnose the problems on those servers so what went into those servers and we used to rely only on the people who have made the changes to diagnose the issues so debugging is time consuming due to update tracking problems provisioning of the servers is usually a longer process in the mutable infrastructure i hope now you understand what is mutable infrastructure so now let's discuss about the immutable infrastructure so as you might have correctly guessed it if mutable means changing immutable means we cannot change the servers so that's why these servers or this infrastructure is called immutable infrastructure and this infrastructure is associated with a cattle in your pet versus cattle devops concept so if anybody would ask you in the interview if you ever heard the term cattle versus pet you you exactly know that they are implying mutable versus immutable infrastructure and you can also associate this with your vertical versus horizontal scaling because in mutable you only scale vertically and you will have a monolith application there and in immutable infrastructure you would scale horizontally because your servers are not liable to change the immutable infrastructure is more suited for the devops practices on top of your cloud environments because if you want to provision a server because there are no fixed servers here you should quickly provision the server using the tools and you can bring down those servers and if you have to install any specific application you would not install the application inside a specific vm or inside a one vm because most of the immutable infrastructure is on a virtualized environment you would deploy that as part of an image and then you would bring those images so the images are here your versionized softwares that you would maintain and if you haven't watched my previous video on ansible versus terraform and how is it different from immutable versus mutable i highly recommend watching that video and that's why terraform is becoming more and more popular tool because in the immutable infrastructure you use terraform to provision the infrastructure and destroy the infrastructure so you would not use traditional configuration management practices to install the software in place or update the software in place or manage your servers or infrastructure in place so now let's look at the pros of immutable infrastructure so each server is independent of the other so they won't have two versions running at the same time and it's easier to track because you would follow your whole devops practices whenever you are tracking these versions and each change is versionized so now let's say you deploy a change and by mistake there is an issue you can immediately destroy that server so it's easier to test different servers and roll out updates since the configuration in each server are consistent and you enjoy the predictability since the servers remain same so they are great for interdependent environments such as cloud technologies and you can roll back deployments since previous versions are unaffected there are only few cons for this you cannot modify existing servers Uh, in case of problem servers with the same configuration need a complete overhaul and you need to externalize data storage instead of copying it to a local disk here we are talking about the stateless applications so like i've said before as companies are moving towards you know microservices you would see that companies would use more of immutable infrastructure and there is still place for the mutability or there is still place for mutable infrastructure for some workloads but that will be outnumbered by the immutable infrastructure i hope this video is going to be super helpful as this is one of the most important concept to understand the differences between mutable versus immutable and cloud is more associated with the immutable infrastructure so thank you so much for watching if you like these sorts of cloud computing basics videos please let me know i can create more such videos so that way you'll be more comfortable in learning cloud if you like this video give it a like and do subscribe to my channel and share this video with all your friends who are learning cloud for the first time thank you